It's usually pretty frustrating having to explain this game to people who have no idea about RuneScape. Hey, you play any games? Yeah, I, I, I play RuneScape. Oh, is that the one from like Miniclip, third grade, around that time? Yeah, I guess that one. Yeah. Um, I mean, not that one. That one's like a whole different game. The one I play is like what that game used to be. The one you saw on Miniclip is like the original RuneScape. The one I play is, is like the original RuneScape, but it's like not... The original RuneScape is different now, so... What? There's two different RuneScapes. Two? Two, right. Uh, there's RuneScape 3, and there's Old School RuneScape. What about RuneScape 2? Well, technically, Old School is RuneScape 2. Wouldn't Old School RuneScape be RuneScape 1? No, that's RuneScape Classic. But that's what I just said. No, you said Classic. I play Old School. You can't play Classic anymore. If you go on your little web browser and type in runescape.com and you see that main page, that main title page, is that's the main game. I don't play that game. But if you go to runescape.com in your little browser, you look in on, a, on the sidebar, this little top thing, it'll say Old School Runescape. That's the one I play. That's 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 the version of the game I play. It's not technically Runescape. Why? Fuck you, man. It, it's difficult to explain this to anybody who's not familiar with RuneScape. It's time someone stepped up and finally did some goddamn explaining around here. How did one of the world's biggest MMOs get split into two games? It all boils down to one update. Hey everyone, I know what you're thinking, Manscaped guy. I want to learn about evolution of combat, but here's the thing, you're gonna listen to me. I've talked about Manscaped uh, quite a few times now, but today, we've got some upgrades. This is, this is an unboxing channel now. I had the Lawnmower 3.0, but now I've got the 4.0. I know you guys love shaving your balls. You see this? It's a light that comes on, so you don't chop your balls off. This is revolutionary. Performance package moment. The refined cologne. Oh, it's the Manscaped Battle Pass Crop Preserver. We've got the Shears 2.0. That's right, that's right. I think what we do is we start a, a stereotype about gamers. Gamers have the nicest looking, feeling, and smelling balls. Hashtag gamer balls, dude. And it starts with the Manscaped performance package. Trust me, I'm doing you a favor. Head to manscaped.com slash Jimmy to get 20% off your order. Highly recommend the performance package. A lot of people asking, do you even use it? Are you just saying it because it's uh, you have to do it for the end? No, dude, I use this shit. I promise you. Take my word for it. It's it's worth it. Thank you again to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. Manscaped guy is going to leave now. See you guys later. Bye. We can't just jump right into this thing. It's the evolution of combat. That's why there's two games. That doesn't explain anything. To get some understanding of this, we've got to do a little time traveling. We're going to be heading back to everyone's favorite year, 2007. RuneScape was well known around the gaming world, and it was fun. I mean, there's uh, over 120 quests to do, 23 skills to max out that you just probably weren't ever going to max out. And arguably, one of the most unique factors and most appreciated parts of the game was the combat. Since the game's transition from RuneScape Classic to RuneScape RuneScape 2, the game is operated uh, on game ticks. One tick every 0.6 seconds, 100 ticks per minute. For example, uh, a scimitar in the game attacks every 4 ticks, every 2.4 seconds. Every 2.4 seconds, the player swings the scimitar at its target, and then, using a formula that puts all of the player's levels into consideration, a number appears indicating how much damage was dealt. Except, nobody fucking knew that back then. Not a single person knew how the combat worked. You clicked the NPC, you hit it, you killed it, and then you click the next one. I vividly remember training on Alcarid guards with a granite maul. I thought it was incredible. And you know what? Everybody else thought it was incredible too. Efficiency didn't exist. No one gave a shit. It was just look cool, have fun. That's what the game was all about. This original combat system made for amazing PvP, and we can see now, more than ever, we've got guys like Odablock who have showcased what exactly you can do in one game tick, and it's terrifying. It's fu it's fucked. It is fucked. Nobody really did any of that. One of the greatest PKers in the entire game at the time uh, was using the special attack on a whip with a dragon dagger in their inventory. Everyone was idiots, but they didn't know they were idiots yet. Bottom line is, RuneScape's original combat system was simple. It worked perfectly for the game, whether it was PVM or PVP, relaxed doing a Slayer task, intense doing a, a fight cave run. Everything just worked. While 2007 was an iconic year for RuneScape, it was also one of the darkest. On December 10th, 2007, Jagex was forced to make a game update that changed 
everything forever. In order to stop a bunch of legal matters that uh, involved real world trading, people paying real money for gold in game, they had to make a decision, which happened to be removing the wilderness and free trade. This meant that lurers could no longer lure, scammers could no longer scam, real world traders could no longer real world trade. But it also meant that players could no longer PK. I mean, they could if they did this bounty hunter game that they replaced the wilderness with, uh, which was an absolute mess. We'll get to that in a little bit though. But with the trade limit intact, I mean, you couldn't give gifts to friends, you couldn't trade between accounts. Well, that was actually against the rules too, never mind. If you did that back then, you're a bad guy. Giving money to your other account, you're a piece of shit. But everything just felt so strict, it didn't feel right. And the wilderness was gone. The one place in the game that allowed players to fight it out, risk versus reward, try to get some gear off people. No, that's, it's gone. Wilderness, wilderness is gone. This update was like the catalyst that sparked the steady decline of the game. I, I am by no means an economist. I don't understand most things, but I've made this uh, graph around me in an attempt to explain just how this market worked prior to this update and why it had such a big impact. This free trade market was the core of the game. The game had a full working system that made all types of players, all categories of players, rely on each other. The game, along with its market, was full circle balanced. Every update, every quest, every new boss was made not with just one type of player in mind, actually not any player in mind at all. It had the game in mind. Every update put out at the time was just an addition to this uh, big circled orb of functionality. There wasn't an account build left in the dark. Let me give you a little example of how successful uh, all of this was, because you can still see it today. Every pure account you can make, even the modern accounts you see today, involves itself in pre-2007 quests or mini games. One Defense Pure, Lost City for DDS, Recipe for Disaster for Myth Gloves, Animal Magnetism for Ranging, Monkey Madness for Dragon Scimitar, Desert Treasure for Ancients. All of those quests grant rewards that are beneficial to PvP builds as well as normal accounts. Void Pure has to do all of that and pest control. And main accounts can use Void for training on pretty much anything they want and it's budget because you don't have to pay for it, you earn it. Zerker Pure? The Pure is named after a helmet you get from a quest because it's an awesome fucking helmet. Even if you're not a Pure or a Zerker, it's a great helmet to have, no matter what kind of player you are. You should have that helmet. That's a fuck yeah. Lunar Diplomacy for Vengeance? One of the most essential spells in PvP of all time. If you're doing PvP with your main account or PvMing on your main account, it doesn't matter. You have to do all those quests. You get some best in slot items or some really good untradeables. Every single player had reason to grind skills out for quest requirements or grind out minigames so you can get the gear rewards. All of the items universally used today by every category of player was out in 2007. I'm going off on a tangent. It's just a little observation. After it happened, there was a huge riot known as the uh, pay to PK riot. There was a lot of rioting. Rioting is just a runescape thing. We should make a video about that. Uh, side note, we're, maybe we should talk about riots. Players didn't just up and leave as soon as this happened. It was this slow decaying process. As many already know, runescape is a huge part of people's lives. You can't just drop it one day because you decide you're not really feeling it anymore. That's not how this game works. But with the removal of free trade in the wilderness, the dynamic of the economy, and the way that players looked at the game changed so much. Slowly but surely, players started logging off. Seeing this screen for the last time. But a lot of players kept going and experienced the weirdest and wackiest era in RuneScape's history. It was just such a shitty time. Jagex, what the fuck, man? Another day, another day. There's a lot of things for other days, dude. Hey, look. It's that another day I was talking about. Late 2007 to 2012 was the it's not a phase mom phase of RuneScape. Jagex was like a dog walker over there trying to get control of the situation. You know, their back is like this. They're trying to like yank uh, these rapid dogs back. You know, some of them are getting away. Jagex is like, fuck, I'm probably gonna get fired for this. I just lost two dogs. Jagex was dealing with a disaster, is what I'm trying to say. It was a good metaphor, fuck you. Players are trying to collect themselves as they learn to function on this game that didn't feel right anymore, spamming the rant section on the forum so hard that they literally removed the rant section. And in the midst of all this, Jagex is trying to make it up to everybody by trying a bunch of quirky things. I mentioned Bounty Hunter earlier. The Bounty Hunter that came strolling right in after the removal of the wilderness to replace it. Getting assigned a target, you kill the target, you get their items, you can get rewards for getting a certain amount of kills. But then it got updated 
did so that that didn't happen because people were like exploiting money making methods. People were probably real world trading through that since it was the only way to kind of exchange money. But they scratched that and they updated the game to have bounty worlds. This brought back the wilderness in its entirety on select worlds. Uh, people could attack each other how they used to be able to. Now if you killed players, you didn't get their items, you would just get some flimsy bounty hunter reward. Andrew Gower writes, it isn't all about the rewards, it's also about the thrill of trying to hunt someone down in an environment where levels are well matched. Uh, Riot. But you know, the game was getting updates. We got summoning. Duel Arena had a 3k stake limit on it to get rid of the high roller gambling and real world trading. That's one of the updates I'd probably still agree with. I don't understand why the Duel Arena is still in the game makes no fucking sense. But I'm not gonna get into that right now, dude, Jesus Christ. Move it to the rat pits, cowards. Uh, you could lend items now, so you could fake being rich or, you know, borrow a whip or something. Revenants were in the game now. Quick chat was implemented, so toxic muted people could spam my favorite item is monkey nuts over and over again. Oh, and hit points, uh, no longer hit points. It's called constitution now and they're life points and they're also multiplied by 10. You guessed it, Riot. And we also of course experienced the transition from the RuneScape 2 graphics to RuneScape HD. The whole game got a graphics overhaul. It modernized the look of everything, textures, lighting detail, you know, catch up with modern MMOs slightly by making it look okay. Riot. While Guthic Sleeps introduced the Dagon High Robes for Mages and Tormented Demons that dropped Dragon Claws, still one of the most iconic PvP items ever. There was a new skill called Dungeoneering, it's a lot like the gauntlet you see in Prif. That brought along chaotic weapons, which became crucial to PKers, huge KO weapons. And then we had Void Stairs Back, and that brought along the Karasi Sword. That thing fucking slapped. Here's an old clip of Framed uh, abusing this, like the abuser bad guy he is. Oh, he's dead, he's done. <laughs> this dude just wiped this guy out, clicking the spec bar twice. That's all the effort it took. The sword was fucked, it was OP. But then, ladies and gentlemen, the game was saved. RuneScape was desperate, on its knees, mouth open for players to return and give it another chance. So a poll began to bring back the wilderness and bring back free trade. With 1.7 million votes and a 91% yes, the wilderness and free trade were coming back. And that also means 136,000 people voted no or don't care, and those people should be trialed for treason. You're a piece of shit. The game had life again. The lures were back, the scammers were back, real world trading, full throttle, baby, let's go. And there was also a gambling pandemic, but it did feel like RuneScape again. The economy circle graph was back, it was doing its thing, the market rebalanced itself, some old players heard news of this and, and came on back, and even one more BK item appeared. Ritual of Majrat brought uh, the Storm of Armadil. It's quoted to be the most destructive spell ever to be put in the game. It just melted people. It was, it was bad, bad news if you were on the other end of it. It was great news for you if you had it. The game looked different, of course, but I mean, it was operating how RuneScape has always operated. But then things started getting a little weird because one day a loyalty program popped up and a couple weeks later, a gambling game, like a real gambling, like you paid the squeal of fortune, get bonus XP and items that you could sell on the GE, just spin it around a couple times and hope for the best. Very weird and out of place considering how cracked down everything was on real world trading. Riot. Of course, there was still a huge gambling problem. It was bankrupting players left and right. Real world trading, all time high. And then a news post, May 11th, 2012. Last week, you may have spotted Mark talking about an exciting addition to RuneScape coming your way. It gives us great pleasure to announce that the evolution of combat is well into development and will be coming this summer. In fact, this update is so huge, it promises to be one of the largest content updates in RuneScape's history, and that it was. Not enough players returned to the game in 2011. There were three years spent with no wilderness, no free trade. That just plummeted this game's population. So even though the wilderness and free trade came back, these players were gone. They didn't care about RuneScape anymore. Were they gonna come back and, and try and catch up with all this shit? They're gone. Okay, they're not coming back. Jagex was in a rough spot, resorting to microtransactions for the first time, implementing loyalty programs and discounts to keep people members. Ten-year veteran cape, runecrafting, your worst nightmare. There's now a mini game that makes it easy as fuck. Come back to us, please. Double XP weekend. You like double XP? I know you like double XP. You can do that. We uh, fire making. You hate fire making? Well, guess what? Now you don't have to do it in a line. You can fucking throw the logs on top of the one log you, you did. 
Bonfire, please come back. Safe to say, all this shit was not enough. RuneScape was still RuneScape. They needed something big, something crazy, revolutionary. So the focus shifted from trying to pull old players back into finding an entirely new player base. I mean, there's huge MMOs taking over right now. You can't really convince people to play this one. So the solution here was to modernize the game. Players were encouraged to sign up for the Evolution of Combat beta. Players who were able to rushed to try it out. You could wear whatever gear you want, try it out on any bosses or NPCs in the game, do PVP. I've never played a game with an ability bar or little squares on the screen that I have to click, like World of Warcraft. I've never played World of Warcraft, but every time I've seen it, I see all those things all over the screen and I'm assuming it operates in the same fashion uh, as you see here. You're fighting something, you click on one of the squares and your guy does something correlating to that square you click. That's what RuneScape had now. But going from a one-click attack system, that's a big drastic change and no one really had interest in learning all of that. We, we are simple people with simple mechanics. This is not simple. I don't like it. I'm scared. And no one was clicking them because they've never had a click and ability square in their life. You could use your keyboard to use the abilities. People are button mashing like they're playing Street Fighter in the wilderness. There was like this adrenaline bar that built up over the fight. Magic spells worked differently. People were dual wielding swords. Special attacks, those are gone. Fuck you, Dragon Claws and, and Karasi Sword. Prayers look different and, and worked differently. Everyone's characters are standing like they're fucking kung fu fighting the other guy. Everything's different and it's stupid and what the fuck is happening? Six months went by. On November 7th, 2012, a two week notice was given to the players. Everyone had to prepare for the biggest right hook Jagex was capable of throwing. And finally, on November 20th, 2012, RuneScape's combat mechanics were replaced by the evolution of combat. Items had different level requirements now, like iron you couldn't wear unless you were level 10. Fuck you, pures. Poison was no longer existent in the game. Skulls no longer exist. You're welcome, Reddit. The market went through a catastrophe. Item crashes. Items became useless. Armor became worthless. People's banks depleted. Account builds ruined. Players continued to you know. At this point, players had one of two options. Get used to EOC and learn it, or leave. Jagex was even paying content creators to make videos about the EOC under the table NDA. Don't tell anybody we're paying you. And this was during the time where people were not okay with sponsors being in the video. You know, you were, you were a sellout for putting an ad in your video even though there's pre-rolls. What the fuck was that about, by the way? It was a different time. It was a weird time. I didn't like that time. Imagine a content creator being financially supported by the game that they play and, and, and make a living from. Disgusting. Majority of players, they were out. It appeared that RuneScape was on its last leg. But then the community was introduced to a couple protagonists that would go on to change everything. It all started with a man you might be familiar with. Brian might as well. I love the pussy! Stefan, we're streaming on the RuneScape channel. Are you kidding me? Get out. Soup. I just want to let you know that below is a petition to bring back at least some servers of the old RuneScape PKing system. I think it would be great for Jagex to bring back four or five servers that all have the old combat system in the wilds. So the wilds just like the, just like the way it was, the combat system just like the way it was. Everything else can be regular like the EOC. And then the idea bounced to a man named Sorect. Ever think about the fact that the players love the old graphics, the old combat system, the old wilderness, the old trade system? How about multi -peak? PKing, clan PKing. Sure, you've done a fine job with PVM and Slayer and quests, but all of these things I just mentioned are gone. How about adding old game servers back? Give the player the option. So Soup and Sorect and a handful of other creators rallied the fucking troops. It was not going to be easy to convince Jagex of this, and, and it definitely was not. We're not asking for maintenance. We don't want to copy our characters over. We can start fresh. They had to be loud, get as much support as possible. One creator after another was helping support and make people aware of this petition. 44,757 signatures signed in support of bringing back 2007 servers. That's what we called a goddamn victory. Jagex proceeded to put up the first of hundreds of polls, getting support from over 10 times the amount of people that voted on the petition to vote in the official poll to bring back servers. And within the month of that poll going up, old school RuneScape servers were up. I won't go into too much detail about that initial launch of it. I interviewed Sorect on our Bankstand and podcast. It was awesome getting to talk to the guy who changed so many of our lives uh, and started careers for so many people. It was great talking to him. You guys can go check that out. So 
down there. This huge community was born. Eight years later, here we are, a game that we built through polls and voting and talking and discussing. This game has brought uh, countless videos, creative series ideas, a PvP game mode that was on par with esports on Twitch, different account builds supported by the devs that changed the way that this game was played forever, a whole new universe of lore with new quests that were separate from the canon of the original game, and leagues, a first of its kind that, you know, let players put their grinds to the test. Yet with all these great things we've accomplished and experienced on old school, the balance seems to be gone. PvP communities and PvM communities are constantly clashing heads about what should be put in the game, what direction the game should go, and recently it seems like the dev focus is in the complete wrong area of the game. Things that need tended to are not being tended to. And then the polls get in the way, you know, they have to listen to this 75% passing rate thing. Right now the game has a staff that was way bigger than before, putting out just a fraction of the content we received back in 2007. The poll system that we know so well that has gotten old school where it is today exists solely because because of evolution of combat. The devs being fearful of putting out a huge update that didn't appeal to players. I think the polling system is necessary in certain times, but not for every little fucking decision. Cosmetics and little quality of life changes. Just do it. Just put shit in the game, man. Don't ask me if I want different color walls on my house. Don't make me vote for that. Just fucking put it in. If people don't want it, they don't have to have it. It's fine. It's not a game changing thing. Don't fucking ask me about my walls in my house. The new updates in the game are not made with the entire game in mind. The endgame PVM content rewards you with items to continue doing endgame PVM content. You do theater of blood, you get a scythe? Well, I guess you can do theater of blood faster next time. No one's bringing a scythe out to PvP. If you do, you're an idiot. Dragon Slayer 2 brought along like a, like a money farm and a bot paradise. Song of the Elves. That armor <laughs> and a rock monster that let you get resources for free. And don't get me wrong, the old school team, they've had their ups and downs, but they've created some really cool stuff for us. But it's easy to see that the balance that was there in 2007 that allowed it to grow so much, it's not there in old school. The updates aren't pleasing people, things aren't coming out fast enough, the dual arena is going hard, bots were practically the economic infrastructure of an entire country right now for some reason. I feel like it's like raising a child. You, you don't trust it at first, you, you need to guide it when it's first growing up for the first first three, four years, you know, it can't make its own decision, but old school is eight years old. It's learned a few things by now. We can maybe try it out. Maybe trust old school just a little bit, a little, a little trial. How about a little trial period? I mean, we can't be doing all the deciding forever. We've got things to do. They've got to grow up. All the devs are there because they love this game. Let's see what they got. That's, that's my take. That's my take. <laughs> I've gone on like 70 different tangents this video. I don't want to leave the original game in the dust. RuneScape is still there. Evolution of Combat is still there. They've made a lot of changes and a lot of updates to it to be more appealable to new players, more easy to understand. They're doing fine over there. Shortly after the release of Old School, RuneScape made the transition to RuneScape 3. It brought along a more fitting game engine that really let the game spread its wings. Like literally, you can buy fucking wings in the shop. Like a lot of wings. There's so many fucking wings in that shop, dude. They're chilling, they're doing their thing, they're vibing. I recently made a RuneScape 3 video delving into the early game content, and it was fun. I mean, I can totally get why people enjoy that game. I'm just a veteran of old school and RuneScape 2. It's not a bad game. They've really improved the combat system from what it started out as. Every time I talk to a RuneScape 3 player, they have nothing but good things to say about the endgame PVM. Some old school players even argue that the endgame RuneScape 3 bossing is a lot more enjoyable than old school endgame bossing. I mean, you can even one-click attack nowadays because they have a system where all the ability boxes get clicked for you and you don't have to worry about it. But now the two games are independent, their own universe, their own communities, their own updates. It's hard to tell the future for either of them, but it's been over 20 years since RuneScape was introduced to the world and we're still here. And I think that says a lot. The evolution of combat has definitely taken a toll on both of the RuneScape games, but I think with a little faith and a little reflection, everything will be just fine. Oh.